Damn! Ow. <gasps> oh shit! Oh man! I just spilled water all over my freaking couch. <laughs> Oh my god, I thought it would be funny. Wasn't that funny? Anyway, battle. Today is a Q&A type of day. Mm-hmm, konnichiwa. Look, new socks. It's salt and limes and tequila. Hey guys, how you doing today? I'm all right until I just spilled water with my fucking computer. I'm overthinking everything right now. <laughs> Sometimes we think we have shit figured out. That we don't. And we have to try to figure out again. Anyway, today's a Q&A type of day. So you guys, thanks for sending all the questions you sent me. Uh, what was your favorite part of working with Cher? This is from Ashley Reed from Twitter. Thank you, Ashley. No matter what mood she's in, however she's feeling, she keeps it real. She's honest. She says it like it is. I like real people. For me, I don't care who you are. We're all human beings. Some of us have a higher status in this world than others. Um, according to whatever and she just keeps it real and that's my favorite thing about working with Cher she's an icon she keeps it real no bullshit thank you Ashley Katie Kate when are you going on tour when am I going on tour when I win the lottery tomorrow because I played or when someone steps on my life and says hey Sean I want to help take take you to the next level and I go uh -huh. It's so expensive, you guys go on tour, and in all honesty, me going on tour, it's not like I could sell out a 5,000 people show. I can't. I'm not known enough, and I'm not in demand. So, so that's why I'm going on tour. I'm gonna do shows here and there in LA. At Erica Florina 7. Florinia, oh my god, right, you guys, can't read for real do you mostly eat healthy no <laughs> I don't I just work out a lot but I'm into I work out a lot <laughs> I take this thing called training mate now in LA they beat the shit out of you it's like circuit training you don't stop don't stop don't, don't. I sweat my balls off literally I have no balls today I took the class this morning but after I took the class then I went and had Burger King Everything in moderation. Even every time my mom calls me, I'm like, Mom, hold on one second. Can I get a more cheese plate and more talk about Desiree Broomfield. I love you, Desiree. You're always always sending me messages. And you're sweet. Have any pre-show rituals, habits? I do. Before the show, I always make sure we all hold hands and we say a prayer because I believe in praying and I believe in God. I say a prayer for everybody that we're gonna be safe and that the show goes well and that I don't F up. And then um, we all put our hands in, and I say one, two, three, and we all go BAM! A lot of push ups. Shitload. Gets my adrenaline pumping. Kendall Gathard. What's up, Kendall? So she said, What is your dream? My dream is be living off of the artistic shit I like to do. So that's my dream. And inspiring people, making people feel good about themselves. If you're talented, I don't give a shit what you look like, where you come from. If you're talented, you're talented. And that's what I represent. My show, I'm getting all over the place. That's what I want my show and my existence to be about. Let meet you all. At Stephanie, R09. Wish up, Steph. Biggest regret in life. In all honesty, and someone could think I'm a big lying piece of shit right now, but I don't have any regrets. I really don't. I feel like wherever I was in my life at that time, that's who I was. That's what I was doing because I wanted to do it. No one forced me to do it. That's where I was supposed to be at the time I was supposed to be, so how can I regret anything I did before? Plus, I don't want to be somebody that lives with regrets. Someone, some, hear my washer? I regret putting my washer on before I made this video. I know people are thinking when they're watching me and they're hearing me say that, everybody has regrets, but I really don't. Next question. Let's go on Instagram. And as I jumped on the couch in the beginning, I think I lost my phone. Oh my god. <laughs> My couch is hungry. Ah! Okay. All that was on the counter. This is from Lori Love. What's up, Lori? Do you still keep in contact with Trish and are you going to perform with her? I do. Me and Trish still talk. I love Trisha. I always will. 
and we still have a really dope connection. But when you have an undeniable connection with somebody, I don't think it ever goes away. I'm going to perform with Trisha. I don't know. Anyway, next question. Thank you, Lori Lowe. Let's go back to Twitter. Would you make a video and song for Bam Bam? This is from Cherry, my little Cherry. Hey, Cherry. Hey, Cherry, did you see the cherries I put on my underwear picture the other day? I thought you. I make a song called Bam. I'm in the process of making it because I don't just say Bam because I say Bam. My whole family has said it growing up there. My mom was always like, Bam, it's done. Um, but for me, it means be amazing. Be the best version of yourself because that's all we can be. <laughs> it sounds tacky, but that's how I feel. So, that's what that is. Thanks, Jerry. Jules Alta. Did you go to school for dancing and how did you start? And how would you say a newbie should start? Lunch Lady and Me. <laughs> that's her name. I didn't go to school for dancing. I started when I was 19. I mean, I, I guess I did. I started taking class, but I didn't go to like college for dance or anything. Shit, I barely got out of high school. I took classes in New York, and then I started dancing and it made me feel so good about myself that I started auditioning and booking shit, and it was came out of the blue. I never wanted to be a dancer my whole life. I didn't even know I, wa I, didn't even know I wanted to do it. I would say for any newbie, get your ass in class. And take class. The more vocabulary you can suck out, you're gonna become a bear dancer. This is from Trisha at Trisha zero five four two six nine zero zero double oh four seven four two four zero. Trisha. She said, "What is your favorite thing to watch on TV?" If I'm just like scrolling through, I like to watch Forensic Files. She won five thousand dollars at the blackjack table. Even though I don't like scary movies at all, I didn't grow up on them. I won't watch them. If my nephews, because they're staying with me, if they put it on, I'm like. Oh, look at me, I'm all dead. I gotta turn this off, because I can't go to bed. I have to sleep with the TV on, because it becomes real, because I'm a two-year-old in my head. I like Forensic Files, even though it's scary. And I like old TV shows. Married with Children, it's so trashy and I love it. Okay, what's your favorite YouTube video you've made? This is from, from at Stephanie R09 again. My favorite YouTube movie, maybe, what? My favorite YouTube, video I've made. Oh my god, the dryer! Shit! I guess my Broke the Rules music video. Because I used the Snapchat filters, it was really hard, it took me months to do, but that was my favorite one. Because it's fun. I broke the rules that crossed the line, you hold them back so much inside. It's very like, kid ish and I like it. So I would say broke the rules of music video. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I'll put the link below. Let's go back to Insta story. This is from Rachel Weston Arnold. What's up, Rachel? My sister's name is Rachel. Cool. What place in the world do you want to visit? I want to visit Italy and France. They're the two places I've never been. If anybody works for a airline company, I'll, I'll take a buddy pass. I'll be your buddy. My buddy. My buddy, my buddy and me. Do you remember that TV commercial? My brother used to sing that when he was little. My buddy, my buddy, my buddy, my buddy, my buddy and me. Thank you, Rachel. Clark, this should be good. This is my best friend in Chicago. He's a disgusting bastard. My question is, <laughs> oh, I can't even, I can't even, I can't even, I can't even answer this question. He's a nasty son of a bitch. Clark, I, I, I ain't asking that. Nice try. Rapid. This is from Vinny BS Off Fly. Saw you in Vegas at Cher's concert. Why aren't you dancing with Cher anymore? Will you be back? As of right now, I won't be back dancing with Cher. I left because I can't focus on my music and my acting career at all. I tried. When you're on tour with an artist, your life is their life. I want too much of my own personal life and my own career with what I want to do to continue doing it. It was hard to leave because it's like my family, it's my second family, and I just love everybody so much, but I had to leave. <laughs> this is from Stephanie Ann, at Stephanie Burkus. What has helped you cope with your dad's passing, and what tips would you give to someone who is dealing with the loss of a parent? It's only been a year since my dad passed away, and already, see how it affects me? Because I miss my dad so much. 
Um, I miss him so much. I cope with it because my father would not want me to stop living life. He wouldn't want me to stop doing what I'm doing. He would still, I know that he's proud of me and um, God, I still, I miss him so much though. We have to keep going, that's what we're supposed to do. And the people that love us would only want us to keep going and keep, you know, the past three days, I'm gonna be honest with you, have been hell for me. I've just been an emotional bag of shit. I'm like, what is next? What am I supposed to be doing? I don't know if something's going on in the world or with astrology or whatever, the moon signs and a water sign. I looked it up to just to double check, but um, my father would want me to keep going. I just focus on how my father treated people and he was such a nice person and, and what he would want, you know? And I'm living vicariously through my dad in a way because I know he'd want me to keep going. So that's how I cope with it. I would tell anybody that is losing a parent that it's it sucks to say that it's part of life because it doesn't feel right when it happens at all. It doesn't feel right. It do, it's not natural, it's not normal. It's like, I know this part of life, but it feels really effed up. It doesn't feel right. Your mom or your dad would only want you to keep going and keep doing and being the best version of you that you can be because they made you. So that's what I would tell people. You just have to keep going and focus on all the good times that you had with them and that eventually you'll see them again one day. Because that's what I focus on. I know I'll see my dad again someday. And I can't wait. But then again, I don't wanna, I don't wanna pass away <laughs> right away either. I still have a lot of life to live, so. That is what I tell you. I wish I wasn't such an emotional piece of shit sometimes. Because then I wouldn't let stuff get in my way. This is from Brandon Moore at Indigo15. What artists, musical performances, and music videos had an impact on you wanting to become a dancer when you were younger? Okay, so this is crazy. I never, I never wanted to become a dancer. Never. I never thought about it when I was little. When I would watch music videos and I'd watch live performances, I never wanted to be a dancer. I always wanted to be the artist. I always wanted to be the singer and the artist. I wanted to be the main person. I still want to be the main person I'm going to be. I fell into the dance because it made me feel good about myself because I was such an insecure little kid that it made me feel confident with myself and it made me feel good and sexy and made me feel like, oh yeah, that's why I did it. Because it made me feel good about myself. But once I got the option that someone came up to me at a show and said, do you sing? And then I found out it was Lou Pearlman who did Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, I said, yes. Did I sing? I don't know, but it worked out. I went and took a singing class the next day and I figured I have something to work with and then opening up for Black Eyed Peas on tour and singing in Chinese in China. Ching Dai Dai, Li Man Man Fei, Shashi Chen Mei Dai. Yeah, I sang it at the pre-Olympic celebration. Anyway, but I wanted to be the main artist. Chantal Johnny. She said, not if, but when are you going to release your first album and when would it, what would the title be? I have like a shitload of music ready to go ready to be launched. I'm releasing my next music video next Tuesday. The song is called Silence. It's featuring another artist. It goes, in the silence, can you hear me? I learned sign language in the song. The girl is featured on it. She does sign language and she sings. And it's really cool. Praying to God that people love it and it does something. It was really hard to get done. The video looks very simple, but it was very difficult. In the silence, can you hear me? Talk to me. The song it means the world to me because I am like 50% deaf. You know, it has a whole meaning behind it. Whole meaning. This is from Neiman Jarsnovic. Where are you from? Um, it says, what is your guilty pleasure, hidden talent, and most bizarre weird thing about you? Guilty pleasure is, besides playing with my winky a lot, no, I'm kidding, uh, kind of. I love fast food, I crave it. I could wake up and I can smell McDonald's. It's shit. It's so bad for you. It is such crap food for you, but I, oh my God, I crave it. I love fast food. I love how fake it is and I love what it tastes like. Um, hidden talent. I can flip my eyelids. I see this as a little kid a lot. I have really big nostrils. Look, everyone in the chair makes fun of me because of this. Look, look, like huge. I pick my nose ever since I was little and I still pick my nose a lot and I don't know, it's because my fingers have always been up my nose as a little kid. 
Kids would also say, yo, can you put this in your nose? When I was younger, I would take a quarter, I would wedge it up there and stick it flat because look at, guys, look at these suckers. Look, I can raise the shit out of my nostrils. A couple pictures too with Cher that were online. I'm like looking at her and I'm flaring my fucking nostrils and I'm like, damn. Everyone thinks it's funny. Oh, and I used to have an Audi belly button and I had it surgically fixed. An Audi to an innie. Classic surgery. I wanted to fix it. If I would do modeling jobs when I was younger, they wouldn't book me because I had an Audi belly button. They'd say they wouldn't want to Photoshop it. And it bothered me so much all the time when I was younger, so I got it fixed. Thank you, Neiman Marcus. <laughs> this Q&A is going to be long as hell. Because the camera just shut off again. That's the second time. If you were a superhero, which superhero would you be? Guess. No. I wouldn't be that one. No, I would be Batman. He's got a dope ass car. You see my car, it's black on black. Kind of looks like the Batmobile. From Batman 1 and 2. The new Batman, I like the one with Michael Keaton, and it's more like fantasy driven with Jack Nichol. What? Jack Nicholson as a Joker, with Danny DeVito as a Penguin, with Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. They were the ones. I'm Batman! And the thing is, like, he he doesn't have any, like, superpowers. He just has really cool shit. A dope suit. He, he's got, um, he lives in a bat cave. A huge mansion, because he comes from all this money. Like, I like it. <laughs> so if I was a superhero, I would be Batman, but I would change my name to Bam Man. Bam! Man! Thanks for asking me all these questions. Thanks for caring enough to ask all these questions. I'm going to be on here regularly. I know I said that before, but I promise I'm really going to. Um, because I have a lot to share. And I used to work for share. Uh, you make me mad, and I will I'll kill you with my nostrils. I'll suck you right up. All right, well, you guys have a good day. Stay weird. Stay true to yourself. There's only one you, and I love weird people. Anybody that's weird or a little off, I'm like... You're not trying to be like anybody else. Subscribe below if you like this video. There'll be better ones coming. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram, at Sean Vanderbilt, at Sean Vanderbilt Twitter, add me on Facebook, and let's dance. Anyway, have a great day. I love you guys. Bang. Clap, clap, clap.